from the News Channel 5 Network. This is KFASA Nashville. Bienvenidos, and welcome to Que Pasa Nashville. My name is Cristina Allen, and thank you for joining us today. Today, my guests are Morgan Wills, who is the President and CEO of Salome Health, and I'd like to welcome um, Martha Figueroa, Figueroa um, who's the engagement specialist um, for Salome Health. And if I said that correctly, um, the partner engagement specialist, is that correct? Patient engagement yes. specialist. Thank you very much for both being on the show. Um, I'm excited to have you on because you're a little institute in Nashville that is just blossoming and really takes the first view of our immigrant community when they arrive. So can you tell me what exactly is Salome and your role and how it came about? That's great. Um, Christina, it's great to be here with you. First of all, it is Salom, S-I-L-O-A-M. Often we're confused with Shalom oh. or other words, but it's a word that comes from the New Testament and the Gospel of John in the name of a pool where Jesus healed a blind man. Um, so our founders, 26 years ago, used that name to encompass what they hoped to see happen at a health center for the uninsured of Nashville, that the work of God might be displayed in their life, regardless of what happened or what brought them there. And although the clinic was initially an outreach to a neighborhood in Edge Hill, uh, initially a Vietnamese refugee showed up one Saturday morning, and he told two friends, and they told <laughs> two friends, and so on. And pretty soon other uh, community members started showing up from the Hispanic and Latino community, the uh, other refugee communities in Nashville. And by the time I joined Salome as a physician in 2000, there were 100 nationalities in our practice. Wow. So we've been doing uh, community-based, nonprofit primary care for the underserved uh, for 26 years. And you're a local boy. I am. I'm a local yokel. You're a local yokel, yeah. with the, who's now the president and CEO and came as a physician. Yeah. What kind of evolved you into get involved with with the clinic and understanding that yeah. diverse community that's coming to your hometown? Uh, I was really a medical student at Vanderbilt University and looking for outlets to volunteer and to serve the community while I was in training and came alongside some older physicians who had volunteered. It was a completely volunteer clinic at the time and uh, was smitten, so you might say ruined, by their approach to whole person care uh, for the, uh, those in need, those really who fall through the cracks of the system, and was recruited to be the first uh, staff physician in wow. 2000. And Martha, how long have you been there? Well, in and out about 10 years. 10 years, okay. Yes. And what exactly is your role? Um, I'm a patient engagement specialist and I'm uh, giving the welcome to all the nations, all the patients that come as a new patients to the clinic and I teach them how uh, clinic policies and I also uh, help them to keep all those policies and Sometime after they become new patients, some of them become eligible for insurance. Wow. So I'm the new face for the new patients, but also I'm also when they uh, become eligible for insurance, I, I help them to transition and find a new doctor under their insurance wow. plan. So they're kind of there short term until they find other primary care? It's kind of a medical foster home in okay. a sense for those who have nowhere else to go. Uh, as people acquire insurance and are able to use the broader healthcare system, we encourage them to graduate into that system. So we'll see a fair amount of turnover in some populations, but for many, especially the undocumented or other uh, patients who never acquire insurance or the, the opportunity to, we'll keep them for 10, 15, 20 years. And as you look at your patient and the changes in the last 10 years since you've been there and of course since you've opened um, with the two Vietnamese and East um, Edge Hill is is what kind of percentage are you seeing in Latinos to Egyptians to refugees I mean is that just a broad stroke of a hundred different languages but where is the um, percentage wise well for like Latino patients our like we have a 40 45 percent of our patients are Latinos okay and but that's just like a big piece. We do have also uh, a lot of patients from Egypt. That's and um, they are uh, a big population. Probably twenty percent. Twenty percent of Egyptians, and we have uh, patients from Congo. Wow, all uh, over. And so, and correct me if I'm wrong. Are they the first clinic 
when they arrive as a refugee to come, I mean, yeah. to your location? Well, it brings up a great question. When I started to work at Salome, I wasn't clear on the definition or distinction between a refugee and an immigrant. Being a local boy, having grown up here in the United States. You define States, that yeah. right now. Then mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead and define that for well, the viewers. <laughs> you know, an immigrant is someone who comes to the United States by choice. By choice. Now, there may be a lot of factors that drive that, so it's not an easy choice or um, a real, truly free choice, but but they have come here out of their own uh, expectation will, yeah. and will, and there's, there's no uh, built-in resources to necessarily help them with that transition. A refugee is somebody who's forced to leave their country of origin because of a well-founded fear of persecution, usually on the basis of race, religion, politics, uh, other factors, and they have some assistance once they've been selected to be resettled in the country uh, in terms of a case manager from a, uh, a relief uh, agency like Catholic Charities or NICE might help them for the first few months transition and identify a place to live and, and find a place to work. But pretty quickly that's gone and they're left on their own as well. I think well. they have a certain like, either six to eight months to be, um, that they get them started and then they have to get on their own. And then that's where they can come right. see you as resources from And, and actually they, sh they show up right at the beginning. We're the one facility in Nashville that, that sees every single new refugee in the mid-state. Uh, they all come through for refugee medical screenings at Salome and have for the and past federal years. grant for that? That's a federally subsidized program. Okay. And that's about a quarter to a third historically of our care at Salome has been tied up in that program. But all the rest has been our primary and specialty care clinic for the uninsured. And many of those patients who come through the uh, refugee screening program will, after getting insurance briefly or being unable to access it, will trickle back into Salome uh, as uninsured patients long term. And on, in your role, as you see these patients, do you see them evolving in their, in their um, opportunities from jobs that they come back, they don't need your services, but they want your services? I mean, can they still come back if they have insurance, or do you try to get them somewhere else? Well, that's one, the mission for Salome is we are here in Nashville to help all the vulnerable population, people who doesn't have have access to health insurance or who doesn't uh, have any way to, where else to go. And so, so they kind of graduate when they yes. leave and stuff. So when they do uh, become uh, eligible for insurance, we help them to transition and find a new doctor. So do, do the refugees understand that this is a, um, in their countries they probably don't have access to any of this. So are they scared of just a doctor and understand just the process? Because some of these refugees are coming from just rural areas of their country that don't yeah. understand just basic health yeah. needs. There's a wide variety of backgrounds that refugees come from. Some are very sophisticated professionals from Syria maybe okay. or Iraq who have been caught up in a war and are displaced and don't require a lot of training about what a health center is and how it works, but many come from very uh, underdeveloped countries from Bhutan or Somalia or Central uh, African Republic and these patients often have associated hospitals as places you go to die. die. Wow. Um, so so uh, prenatal care might be a challenge. Oh yeah. You know, little things of Everything's preventive. Everything's a challenge. So, yeah, so we're point. often playing catch up on a lot of care that hasn't been given over years or even decades, as well as identifying and sometimes treating conditions that you don't normally see in a typical doctor's office in Nashville. And I'm assu assuming you speak Spanish. How many languages are in your um, office? Well. I think there are uh, around 80, 80 languages. Among wow. the patients, yeah. Among well, the patients, about yes. About the staff. <laughs> In the staff, we have uh, Latinos, we have Egyptians, uh, we have uh, Iraqis. So your staff is very diverse to yes. deal with the So cultural sensitivity, cultural intelligence plays a role in your staff to be open for them to um, give of themselves to you yeah. for that personal medical care. Yeah. So how does your staff, where do they come from to want to be in your environment? It's a good question. Um, a lot of our clinical staff were like me, trainees either at Vanderbilt or other local institutions who tasted a little bit of the kind of care we offer and said that's why I went into medicine. Oh, and nice. so we have recruited most of our clinical staff through exposure in that way. 
Um, but the rest of our team, and we have an, a pretty broad interdisciplinary team, it's not a doctor-focused practice. We have a, a pharmacist from Belmont University who's stationed with us. We have a behavioral health consultant. We have a pastor on staff. Um, we've had a social worker off and on. Uh, folks in the patient relations department like Martha and others. Um, so there's a broad array of roles and increasingly, especially in Martha's department, it's really critical that they be representative of the countries that we serve. It's a trust yeah. factor. And yes. have some of the language skills. We don't have 80 languages on staff, although one of our employees has about eight languages. Yes, that speaks, so. that's surprising <laughs> yeah. too. Well, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back as we continue to speak about the Salome um, Health Clinic, what they do and how they benefit Nashville as a whole. We'll be right back with Get Bus in Nashville.